Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Good morning, everybody. Uh, if we could come to order, please. This is the December 2nd, 2019, 9 a.m. meeting of the Alamance County Board of Commissioners. I'm Chair Amy Scott Gailey, and with us today we have Commissioner Sutton, Vice Chair Boswell, Commissioner Lashley, and Commissioner Carter. So, Commissioner Sutton, if you would please lead us in an invocation and a pledge. It's a privilege. If we could take a moment, please, my Heavenly Father, thank you for the Thanksgiving season that we just went through, but help us to always remember that is not the only day that we need to give thanks for the blessings that you've put on our existence. As we enter the Christmas season, help us realize what that season is about, and also know that that day is not the only day that we need to remember that. Please be with our military around the world to keep us free and safe. Please be with our world leaders everywhere, including ours, to get us to where mankind needs to be on this planet. Be with this board as we have a new reorganizational or organizational period for the upcoming year. Help us do the things that we need to do to benefit the citizens of this county that we represent. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next we have the time for public speakers. We do have uh, rules for public comment uh, posted on the county website. Those who are contemplating coming to speak, if you would please review those rules before coming, that would be useful and helpful. Um, also, if there's anybody who's thinking about coming to speak and you have a condition or a, a, some kind of thing that uh, you need accommodation for, if you'll let us know that ahead of time, then we'll be glad to attempt to try to help with that. Um, this is the time for uh, speakers on agenda items. We have a second public comment period at the end of the meeting for non-agenda items. And it looks like the two people who have signed up for public comment have signed up for non-agenda items. So we'll postpone those speakers for later. There being no public speakers on agenda-based items, uh, are there any commissioner responses? If not, if we can move on to approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. If there's no discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Uh, next is the approval of the consent agenda. Motion to Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, next we turn it over to County Manager Haygood for the board organization for the upcoming year. Thank you. Uh, as the commissioners know, the board holds its organizational meeting during the first regular meeting in December. And at this time, the floor is open for nominations for board chair. Make a motion that we um, not that to nominate Amy Gailey to continue as board chair. Second. So we have a nomination uh, for Amy Gailey for board chair and a second. Are there any other nominations? If not, the floor is closed. All those in favor of Amy Gailey for board chair, please signify by saying aye. 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 Vote unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, and thank you, gentlemen. Um, if y'all will indulge me, I want to tell a little story real quick uh, that I heard from somebody who was in the Air Force for a while. There, were, it, it was a pilot. So there are a couple of lieutenant colonels who were flying on a mission together. And in order to be in command of a mission, you have to go to aircraft command school. And they had both been, of course, to aircraft command school a long time ago. And the aircraft commander just has to file extra paperwork, the flight plan, and keep up with some documents and stuff. So they're walking out to the airplane, and one of them said to the other, you know, I think, I think you know what, if you want to, you can be the aircraft commander this time. <laughs> and the other one said, no, actually, no, I've been thinking about it, and you, I think you should be probably the aircraft commander. 
and they kind of stood there for a minute and then there came a young captain walking toward him who had just come back from aircraft command school and they looked at each other and they looked at the captain and they said you know captain we've been thinking about it <coughs> discussing it and we think that you should probably be the aircraft we think you're ready we are ready for command why don't you be the aircraft commander of this mission and the captain said really you think that i can do that that'd be awesome and they ran off to uh, flight ops to follow the flight plan and do the other work and the lieutenant colonels looked at each other and they said let's you know let's go in back and <laughs> Have a chat. So um, sometimes I feel like the young captain on a board of lieutenant colonels. <laughs> but I'm honored and pleased uh, to be able to serve, and I thank you for your confidence in me. And that's all in good fun. So with that being said, uh, if we would open the floor to nominations for vice chair. I'd like to nominate Steve Carter. Is there a second? I second the nomination okay. for Steve Carter for vice chair. Um, is there any uh, is there any other nominations? If not, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Welcome to the board. Appreciate All right. <laughs> all right. Next uh, on the agenda is a review of the bonds for public officials. Susan Evans. Board, board, may I ask a question? Do we have to have a new picture now that you're, you're there and Eddie just shifted with Steve? Looks like we'd be able to keep that same picture. I would do yeah. We'll discuss it with Corey. I would tend to agree. I hate taking new pictures. <laughs> I'll stay out here on the wing. I'm fine. Yeah. Well, we always stand up. Well, that's true. You don't want to switch this time. Do what? Do you want to switch places with I'm good. All right. All right. Ms. Evans, thank you. You're very welcome. Good morning, Commissioners. Before you is our annual approval and review of the performance bonds for public officials. This covers the tax administrator, Jeremy Akins, Sheriff Terry Johnson, myself as finance officer for the county, Hugh Webster for the register of deeds, and then myself again for the finance officer position for the TDA board. Okay, we do need to have a vote on this to approve these bonds, I I'll move that we approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve those bonds for public officials. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, thank you. Uh, next, we have a grant project ordinance for the DSS Office of Violence Against Women grant. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good. Um, I'm before you this morning asking you to adopt the grant project ordinance in the amount of $299,223. And this is a two year continuation funding of a grant that we received, and we've had it for three years. So we're just asking that you adopt this. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion a second, and there's no match required. That's right. correct. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. Thank you. And then we have a budget amendment for the library. <coughs> Susanna Goldman. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. This budget amendment is for our allocation of state aid that we receive every year. We budget based on previous year's amounts that we were do receive, and then once the state votes on our budget, they allocate us this current year's amount. Um, we were notified that we will receive an additional $1,798 this year than we anticipated from last year. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the budget amendment. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, Anyone opposed? All right, thank you so much. All right now we come to the time on our agenda for public speakers who are want to address the board on non-agenda related items. The first is Walt Whitman. Thank you. Good morning. 
Um, I do have some paperwork for y'all. Is it okay if I pass it out? Sure. So, Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, Ken. I probably, I probably wouldn't even be here if it was. I'd be in the Bahamas or somewhere. Yeah. Uh, you still go. I've got some property on uh, in Alamas County on Greensboro Chapel Hill Road. And the person that has the property adjacent to me has a shooting range set up. And his name is Jonathan Cole. Uh, he has targets as close as four yards to my property line. And he, from what I understand now, he shoots. He goes around and shoots matches and stuff, so he does a lot of practicing. But my son-in-law was out there the other week, and uh, he had to leave the property because bullets were coming <coughs> up on my property. I called the sheriff's department. They were very responsive. The deputy met me out there. I showed him everything. He, he, went, he went back and uh, talked to his lieutenant. And Alamance County does not have a shooting ordinance. So I guess in Alamance County, no matter where you're at, you can shoot across somebody's property. And as long as you don't shoot somebody, there's nothing anybody can do about it. And uh, I pulled up the statute. And the statute says for reckless shooting, and uh, even the, the lieutenant went and talked to the DA about it. And he said, unless someone in my family was shot, there's nothing anybody could do about it. Uh, I've got some pictures on here. Uh, on the first page, it just shows the property lines. The property uh, circled to the right in the red is Mr. Cole's property. Uh, mine is on the left. And uh, on the second page, uh, the very top picture shows to the left his little shooting house up there. It's 126 yards from my property line and all the red circles are his targets. And uh, that's, the, that's the, de the direction he shoots at every one of his targets is straight toward my property. Uh, the, next, the next picture down is uh, that sign, that target is four yards off my property line. And the next one down, there's a group of plinkers there that he shoots at, they're 26 yards off my property line. And they're metal. There's no backstop, no burn, no anything behind any of his targets. Uh, and if you'll turn to the next page, uh, I drew lines going to his target, showing which way he shoots. The next picture is a ground blind my son-in-law has set up. He boat hunts out of, and it's probably about 30 yards inside my property line. And then the next few pictures are pictures of trees on my property that have damage, that have bullet holes in them. Uh, and that's just the pictures I could find and take in a short amount of time. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, my, my family's scared to even go out on my property now and enjoy my property because they're scared to get shot at. I did print out the, the statute of the discharge of firearm or reckless disregard, but basically I was told unless somebody's shot, there's nothing anybody can do. And uh, the back pages or some of the other counties. Orange County has an ordinance that says unlawful for any person to discharge a firearm in any manner that causes a projectile to leave the property on which it is discharged, mm -hmm. which I think is a very fair. So Mr. Whitman, that's the end of your three minutes. Um, unfortunately, because it's very interesting and um, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Um, we'll, we'll discuss. I would like well, to ask we'll you one question. Yeah. Sure. Uh, if you go from the, I'm not sure which is that's the front. Back. Yes, sir. It looks like a some type of metal container there. No, that's a ground blind my son-in-law bow hunts out of. Oh, 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 so oh, it's oh, made oh, out of oh, fabric, oh, okay. and that's in that group of trees that I took the pictures of that have and bullet holes in them. Holes. So he had to leave from there the other week because he was scared he was going to get shot. Okay. So, Mr. Whitman, um, while we're discussing, it may be that we have more questions for you. Just hang around. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, next on our uh, list of people signed up to speak is Jane Lee Hicks. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Jane Lee Hicks, and I live in Snow Camp. And I'd like to thank the commissioners for the opportunity to speak to you today on behalf of over 400 members of the No, Stamp, no Snow Camp Mine community. And I just have some questions. <coughs> The minutes you just approved from the September 3rd, 2019 commissioner's meeting <coughs> include a comment from Mrs. Poe requesting that you enlist the services of an independent attorney experienced in land use law who might review with our attorney the height of violations outlined in his letter. To our knowledge, nothing came from that request until the following month uh, at the October 21st 
2019 commissioners meeting you voted to engage an outside attorney to review the accuracy of the county's activity in permitting Mr. McDonald's gravel mine specifically whether the county made any errors in issuing the permit was the applicant Mr. McDonald entirely truthful what could be done to remedy any apparent violations and is there a statute of limitations and I think that was your, your list of, of items uh, the question of why the two maps was also mentioned and whether the stream map generated by Neil Pressler for Alamance aggregates in February 2018 which was as seen on the site plan submitted to the state would that have impacted the county's decision the previous month to issue the Hydo permit on the video we hear chair Gailey mention at the end of the discussion that the outside attorney would report directly to the Board of Commissioners and asked if this attorney's review or report would be under attorney client privilege as it would be in preparation for a lawsuit our community would like to know is this attorney being hired in response to mrs. Poe's request on on September 3rd to respond to our attorney or is his role more consistent with helping the county review our allegations of Hido violations in preparation for a potential lawsuit specifically is it your intention to have him review the July 1 2019 letter sent by our attorney outlining apparent violations of the Hido that occurred with the intent to construct permit issued to Seaway and McDonald and respond to our attorney as requested in that letter if so then what is the timeline for his engagement as it's been three months since we first requested an outside counsel and now more than 30 days since you approved the hiring of an outside attorney so we do sincerely appreciate your ongoing concern for ensuring that the permitting process that was conducted was in full compliance with all the provisions of 2011 Hido apologize for sounding like a broken record but it's still a question not quite answered to our community and thank you for the time thank you Ms. Dick. <coughs> All right, there being no more public speakers, do we have any commissioner responses? Is our ordinance on the gun deal that bad as far as, I mean, I can't, comment. I mean, I love guns as much as anybody. I can't imagine somebody shooting bullets across my property and I can't do, it can't be handled. I can't comprehend it. I, I agree. Do. I agree with that. Well, the sheriff's shaking his head, yes, so. There's What's that? that? Yes, I agree with you. You agree that it agree should be you. that way. However, so we don't have somebody's that. fired a weapon on your property, you have a right to bring a civil action to make you stop it. It's called a nuisance. That's what I was thinking. You can bring an action in, in <coughs> Supreme Court, get a restraining order, and tell them stop shooting across my property. That's exactly what I do. Well, Walt will give us some different articles, and I'm thinking <laughs> these are from I'm Orange County, yeah. maybe. The, the first one is from Orange County, and they're, they're, well, that's the statute there, but the Orange County ordinance states that if you fire a projectile on your property, you have to be able to keep, that projectile has to be stay on your property. Um, that's, uh, I think that's Castle County, rule. Yeah. this man shoots all the time. And I understand, I love to shoot. I used to work in the jail. I was an armed detention officer. I love to shoot. But I know better than to set up a shooting range on nine acres of land. And have a target four yards off of my neighbor's property. If he wants to shoot, shoot I'm back trying, before they're. I'm not trying to be right? smart, but my my response to the lieutenant that called me, Lieutenant Minnick, it was very nice. He checked, he checked with the DA and everybody. I said, if I bought the property next to Sheriff Johnson and he was mowing his yard, and I shot across his yard and didn't hit anything, the deputies would be in my driveway in five minutes. But it's just, and my, my grandson is three years old, sure would. and my yeah, son-in-law son is trying to get, my grandson's all boy. He loves to be outside. He can't even take him over there and sit in the blind with him because he's scared he's going to yeah. get shot. Right. Uh, and this guy shoots thousands of rounds. They have matches over there, and he's trying to do it on four and a half or five acres of land. Are there not some rules about a shooting range? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like guys Castle County has a rule that you have to have a minimum of 20 acres. Yeah. You have to have a berm 10 feet high, two feet wide of just dirt, so the bullet, the projectiles will not go through it. Uh, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. I'm, 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 I think I'm, that would be something we should look at. Well, if he, if he, Mr. Boswell, if he has applied for a permit for a shooting range, that'd be one thing. But it's a private citizen discharging a weapon. On any property that's going to his neighbor's property, 
But if he's what the gentleman was saying, it sounds like he has a shooting range. If he's having matches, if you know, right, it would be an unlicensed. Yeah, it'd be an unlicensed thing. Mm -hmm. Would that not be the approach to take on it? It's on unlicensed shooting range. I, I, I don't think about it. It's the first time I've heard it. I'd like to. Well, I would suggest I give you one of these. Hand that over to Clyde. Yeah. He definitely needs to look at that. Mr. Albright, I recall when we were talking about the noise ordinance and we heard these uh, <coughs> concerns about neighbors uh, shooting and disturbing people with noise and also with projectiles. I recall that there was a statute that some people brought to our attention that said that we are unable to regulate it is unlawful to regulate shooting ranges. Um, but other counties seem to be able to, right? Well, that would be my question. Uh, was And I can't recall that statute number or where that was. Um, one of my questions I, is whether or not that was, we can't regulate them for noise or we can't regulate them for that's not, that's, not a legal, that's not a legal shooting range. That personal property is not. Well, if we don't have we don't have an ordinance to regulate shooting ranges at all, so there's no such thing as an unlicensed shooting range in Alamance County because we don't license them. I believe. Let me study this and get back to you. It's kind of hard to yeah, do something I, like this. I think that would be good. Fly with a yeah. public comment. That is a really good idea. Also, um, Mr. Whitman, this House Bill 942 that you've included in your materials, was that enacted or was this a proposed bill? No, that's that's a statute. But but basically, I was told unless someone in my, in my family is shot, there's nothing that can be done about it. Unless the county has unless, it. Unless, right, they can't charge him unless he shoots someone in my family. And I, I hate to keep speaking, but I did talk to Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole called me. And basically, he, he said if I would call him when we were going to go onto my property, he, he would try not to shoot. Oh, That's real nice. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I, I swear. <laughs> and my response to him was I, should, I shouldn't have to no. ask permission to go on my own property no. to not be shot at. And when you talked to the district attorney's office, mm. did you talk to Mr. Boone himself? I did not. Lieutenant Manick of the Sheriff's Department did that for me. And they said unless somebody in my family was shot, that he could not be charged, and there's not a shooting ordinance in Alabama's <coughs> County. But if you're talking about a criminal statute and a civil statute, we talk two different things. And the, in the packet here, he's provided you with the criminal. Right. That's no, right. I, I, yes. And that's what the DA is is responsible for criminal violations. I would well, suggest. Let me, take, let me take a look at these questions. Here. Yeah. Yeah. I would suggest in the meantime that you reach out to Mr. Boone directly, and um, with the statute four, it's 14 is the criminal. Um, chapter and uh those pine trees look rather expensive to me mm -hmm. so go after him <laughs> well i'd rather not do that i mean he is a neighbor i know i do on the property next to him mm -hmm. i have a consideration i do love to shoot but yeah. i know better than to do that on, you wouldn't on, shoot towards you know if i set up a range on my property and started shooting back up toward his house yeah as long as i didn't hit anything nobody can do anything about exactly. it that's, and that's it's not, not right, right. We agree. We just not have right. fields with McCoy. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we, don't, we don't want to do that. No, we're, that's not the right thing to do. I just want, I, I don't care if he builds a, a, if he shoots 24 hours a day, as long as his bullets do not cross my property line yeah. sure. and endanger my family. Where yeah. now they're scared to go on my property and, and bow hunt or do whatever they want to do. Even if my grandson wanted to ride a four wheeler, he can't do it because he's scared he's going to get shot. Yeah. I don't want him to go like that. Yeah, that's not right. So we will follow up on this. Right, Clyde? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Whitman. All right, are there any more responses? Um, I'll respond to Ms. Hicks. Um, Ms. Hicks, it was my, and I can only speak for myself right now, it was my intention in hiring the private attorney not to specifically address the questions in the letter, but to ask the specific questions. Was the permit validly granted? Um, is there a statute of limitations that applies? If the permit was not validly granted, is there anything we can do about it at this time? Um, sort of an independent council type review of the permit situation, not really specifically to address the <coughs> questions that were raised to respond to that particular letter. That was my um, thought in that. I understand we've sent the package, Mr. Albright, to uh, the attorney in 
Yes, we engaged. We engaged. We sent that uh, by express mail. It was too big to send it by email, so we had to put it on a And he's drive. he's reviewing the process. <coughs> he is. It's basically what he's hired to do. Yes, sir. Okay, if there's nothing further. Uh, excuse me, I apologize. I wasn't sure where to throw this in, if I could have uh, say something. Please. Of course. Uh, yesterday, I had Brian forward all y'all and the sheriff, and the sheriff and I talked about as we came across the street, the uh, article, and it said it took a Louisville newspaper <laughs> to expose this. More so. More. more. Uh, we've heard all about it. But it's three articles. And it's not just one, but the one that really hit me the hardest was Axton, Virginia, which is in our backyard. I guess you could drive from here to Axton in what, an hour, maybe? And I was telling the sheriff, when I got out of college, I lived uh, in Eden. Well, I lived in Greensboro first, then I moved to Eden, and I used to <coughs> drive that road to Axton. It's called Logtown. That's that's the uh, sort of the slang term for because cut so many trees in there, a lot of lumber. And I would cut through Axton to go over to 58, to go to Danville, go by the Buffalo Farm. <clears throat> but right there in Axton, where all this, they're, they're writing about. I've knocked on doors, trailers, mobile homes, collecting loan payments. That was my first job. It was CSR, customer service rep. And I had to go out and, they weren't bad areas to me. I just had to go out and <laughs> knock on doors. And I was there in Axton, Virginia, and would have never thought that I would have in my life read an article that was saying that was such a hub cart for the cartel, and how violent and how widespread, how the network is. And I hope the sheriff have something to say about it. But I hope y'all will read all, all those <coughs> articles. It's stunning. And everything he's ever said about this area being a hotbed for drugs couldn't be more true. And I hope this board, I will, and I hope going in the future will give the sheriff's department everything they need to combat what is just a bacteria and a cancer on this country. Mm -hmm. Absolutely true. And, and that's a small town too. It says yeah. the population. Is yeah, actually it's right yeah. there at Danville. A little bit it's on the North Carolina line. There's two accidents really. Well, no areas. There's two areas. Uh, North Carolina and Virginia. But accidents right there across the line from Eden. And you drive up through there and cut over to 58. I've done it a million times. Going to, you know, my wife and I will cut up through there and go to Danville, we'll go out to eat, and collect uh, accounts up that way. And it's stunning that the whole country saw this. These articles. It was in those that the disclaimer, or not the, the disclaimer, but the notice for those articles were were at the bottom. Even the, the Times News had. <clears throat> Of every paper that I click on, you know, I got an iPad full of newspapers, and if you look down at the bottom, it, every one of them had Fayetteville every, everywhere had that disclaimer about those articles. Well, you know, Mr. Uh, Sutton, I appeared for the commissioners talking about the Sunlow cartel presence here. The new generation is one fighting the Sunlow, but Sunlow is all over North Carolina. And I know the Burlington paper <coughs> accused me of trying to scare the citizens when I talked about the Sun Lowell Cartel. And they're here. We, I mean, we've arrested some of them. We've had kidnappings. We've had murders involving those individuals mm -hmm. here. So they're here, and it's time that we open our eyes to what's going on in our communities. I can tell you that. Uh, on the news last, I think it was last night on the news, I saw where the, the president had, a, had uh, designated the Mexican cartel is <coughs> a national terrorist. Mm -hmm. I'm glad he did. If they do that, I, I was with the Homeland Security <coughs> last week, uh, then we can go after them uh, in Mexico, we can go after them here. Right. If they're declared uh, domestic yeah. terrorists. <coughs> and that's what needs to be done. The next item on our agenda is a report from the county manager. Mr. Hager, do you have a report? I do not. Okay. Is that our Christmas gift? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Um, do we have any more commissioner comments today? Um, I had a couple of things. One, um, we have had some uh, people from Solar Farms <coughs> come to approach the board asking that we reconsider having the Solar Farms as a class two. And I was, was wondering if um, there was interest in the board of having an agenda item for the next meeting to set a public hearing 
to consider whether to move the solar farms back. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. One. Yeah. Okay, so Mr. Haygood, if you would make a note, please, to um, put that on our next agenda. Sir. An uh, item to set a public hearing. And uh, <coughs> we'll discuss whether or not there's anything else we need to do ahead of time to make sure that we've uh, gone through the legal processes to amend that ordinance properly if that's what the board decides to do. And then um, the other thing that I had was you have, the commissioners, you have before you committee assignments. And... Um, you know, I meant I didn't mean anything with my story earlier. <laughs> like that, once that came out, it sounded different from how it did in my head. But uh, that was just good natured teasing. But uh, if anybody wants to trade a committee, if you would let me know, if you see a committee on there that you don't currently hold that you would like to do, if that somebody else is doing, we can work that out. Um, if you have a committee that you would like to. Um, <coughs> trade for something else if you have one that you're willing to give up if you would let me know that or um, Tori then we can work all that out this is the time to add or change committees for the commissioners to reconsider our committee assignments for the upcoming year so I just ask you to review that so if there's nothing else then we will be adjourned thank you Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioners meeting. Meetings of the Alamance County Board of Commissioners occur on the first and third Monday of every month in the Commissioners Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Grand. Typically the first meeting of the month occurs at 9 a.m. and the second meeting occurs at 7 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting is broadcast on local Gov TV. Please go to www.localgovtvnc.com for more information about this schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our website at www.alamance-nc.com or at our YouTube channel. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of the meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about our commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the County Commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioner's Meet. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.